Welcome, everybody. Um, it's never an easy decision to, uh, to release a head coach or change head coaches. Uh, in fact, we've done it so rarely. This has uh, really had two coaches in the last 18 years. So it's not something we do every day, and it's not something that uh, uh, you can anticipate. But um, anyway, it was a, a clear and uh, important decision that had to be made. And um, I look forward to uh, uh, watching Chip succeed wherever he goes, because I think he really will. But I also look forward to uh, a real improvement in um, where we're headed and uh, uh, you know, very much look forward to the 2016 season where we'll have an opportunity with a new head coach, new leadership, and um, uh, the opportunity for the players and the organization and uh, everybody involved to perform up to their maximum. And I think that's uh, uh, we're talking about being able to perform and uh, uh, do the very best you can as, as people and as players and uh, everyone involved. And I uh, uh, really just want to publicly thank Chip. Uh, nobody worked harder the last three years. Um, and uh, smart guy. And it was a bold decision to hire him and uh, had certainly some success. And uh, you know, wish him the very best, as I did yesterday. Um, happy to answer any questions. Howard. Uh, where did it go wrong, in your opinion, and when did you come to this conclusion? Um, you know, with, with a coach and, and with almost any key executive, uh, it's important to really carefully evaluate and analyze, uh, not to be impatient, not to react to a series of games. Um, so every season, I have to carefully look over everything. And this was really a three-year evaluation. Uh, three-year evaluation of uh, where we're heading, what is the trajectory, uh, what is the progress or lack thereof, and what did I anticipate for the foreseeable future, and uh, and, and that's why the decision was made. When did you make that decision? Jeffrey, over here, I'm sorry. Okay. You spoke so enthusiastically a year ago about Chip's vision and maximizing Chip and yeah. and integrating scouting with coaching and how did you so quickly move on from from that certainty that that was the right way to go? Well, last March, I think I spoke to uh, many of you, and I said uh, with Chip's vision, um, it was an opportunity that he wanted to lead the way to try to go from good to great. And I, in fact, I remember saying to all of you that uh, uh, there's uh, dangers in that in terms of having two 10 and six seasons in a row and um, whether uh, making significant changes, you can easily achieve mediocrity. And uh, uh, I think it would be a shame not to try, but uh, the end result was mediocrity. And uh, you know, as the uh, owner of the team, I've got to look at the progress and the trajectory of where it's headed. And uh, it's disappointing to me, but um, that is the danger when you take a risk. Um, Jeff, did you present an option to, to Chip to uh, stay on as coach but not have complete personnel control, or was that not talked about? Uh, no, I did not offer that. Um, it was decided that it was best to uh, go in a different direction. Right here, Jeff. Did Chip at least make a play to try to keep his job? No, he did not. But the atmosphere was such that I think he knew he was being let go. So in fairness, um, that decision was made before uh, Chip uh, met with myself and Don Smolensky. A, a Tuesday night before week 17, why then? Why the timing last night? Three reasons uh, for the early, earliest timing, I suppose you could say. Uh, one, I wanted to get a jump start on our head coaching search. And uh, I knew already what we were going to do, and I thought having six extra days was, was pretty important because, as you know, it's a chaotic, uh, rushed schedule when you're, when you're looking for a head coach. Secondly, I thought, in fairness to Chip, it was uh, a good way for him to also uh, view the marketplace and see what's possible uh, in terms of employers. Most importantly, however, was the opportunity that, uh, to spend a lot of time with our players. And I've already started that process. I had a meeting, players only meeting with them today. This morning, there's going to be more this afternoon with certain players. I'm going to meet again with them on Monday. And um, I think, you know, 
that, that, is the, that was the defining um, decision in terms of uh, when you make a decision the Monday after the last regular season game or, or a playoff loss or something like that, uh, the players really uh, go for some physicals and uh, disperse, and they're anxious to go home. Uh, in today's world, I, especially f at least the way I like to run things, I want to hear from the players. I want to um, engage them and have them understand what they felt was lacking, I need to understand, um, have them understand and take accountability, but also uh, at the same time be a sponge for what is leadership like in today's football world. You're dealing with 22 to 35 or more uh, age people and uh, people who are elite athletes trying to perform uh, at the very peak of their profession and um, there, there's a lot of issues. And what is leadership like in today's world? It's very, very different than it was 10, 15, 20 years ago. And uh, you know, I would like to think that we're always going to try to be on the progressive end of how to lead. And that's top down, but it's also through the head coach and people the head coach surrounds himself with. And uh, it's a real opportunity. And uh, if I waited till Monday, there would be so much less of that opportunity. Jeff, the, you said the players' uh, opinions right here factored into your decision. Um, it was it was it just the football, or was it how he acted, or about how Chip went about his business socially, how he communicated with his players? No, um, the you know, I think the question is how does it how did it relate to the players in terms of the decision? Um, you know, it's one of many factors. Uh, there's so many factors when you're evaluating any senior executive and certainly a head coach. So many, so many job responsibilities, and uh, you know, in this case, it was just a a, um, a plethora of of variables that had to be looked at, and uh, the decision was made that it was you know important to move on. Jeffrey, did Jeffrey at all, in your opinion, back your back your at all, in yes. your opinion, and from all the research you've done, did Ship lose the locker room, in your opinion, and how much of this had to do with his relationships inside the building? and with the players as much as it had to do with, you know, only winning six games this year. Right. It's, it's never just one thing when you make a change. It really is not. It's uh, so much a combination of so many factors from performance to uh, uh, you can, you know, come up with ten different variables. So it's, it was more the, the, the lack of progress and the trajectory we were going. And, um, and a full evaluation of every responsibility that head coach has and you know, in a determination how you would predict the next year would go. Did, did he Jeff lose a locker room, though, in your opinion? No, I don't. I, I would not say that. Jeffrey, what's your vision of the front office? Will you hire a general manager now? Uh, and and are, are, are you reluctant to ever give a head coach personnel control again? Yeah, those are all good questions. Um, in terms of a reluctance to give a head coach uh, that much control again, um, you know, we, we've done it in the past um, to some degree with, with Andy Reid with, with a lot of success. Uh, I, I think the best approach um, is a real collaborative approach. Um, I, I just, uh, in this case um, with Chip, I think there were some very good reasons to be bold about what he wanted to be able to accomplish and do. However, you know, going forward, I think a much more collaborative approach between player personnel and coaching uh, is, is the way to go. And um, that's the direction we would go. In terms of the, the front office and the uh, executives and all that, I mean, Howie Roseman will remain as uh, executive vice president in charge of football operations. Uh, Tom Donahoe will run the day-to-day -day player personnel department, which is a uh, you know, crucial hire and a crucial uh, position in terms of player personnel. Uh, how we will, will uh, be responsible for making sure our player personnel department is uh, as good as it gets in the NFL and be accountable for that. And um, uh, that's, that's pretty much the way uh, it would go. A new head coach, um, executive vice president of football operations, and a player personnel head, they're all partners to collaborate. And uh, that's, that's the structure. Will have, have we have a say in personnel? You will have a say in personnel as a collaborator, yes. Jeffrey. Uh, you mentioned 18 years, two head coaches. Yes. I mean, there is a lot of leeway with Ray Rhodes, you get an extra year, so to speak. Same thing with Andy Reid, maybe more so. Why the difference in this scenario with Chip Kelly? Well, I guess my memory is not that great, but with, with Andy, it's uh, more recent. Uh, I, I would say, you know, going back to with Andy, every time and, and the few times that we ever did not have a winning season and we were, uh, let's say, 8-8, eight and eight, 
Uh, he always came back the next year with a uh, 10 win or more season uh, and we're in the playoffs. And um, uh, we didn't have that history here. That was, there's nothing to, to you know, to, to basically base that on. Uh, so that was a, a situation with Andy that uh, I just had a lot of faith that the following year uh, would create a double digit win season and it usually did till the very last time. Jeffrey, straight ahead. Um, yeah. I just want to double back on the players. Not not so much losing the locker room, but yeah. you, you talked about getting their feedback now as to what went wrong. Mm -hmm. How much did you get ahead of this decision? And so much was made of your conversation with DeMarco on the flight home. Did that have a lot to do with it? Did DeMarco have a lot of right. input uh, on this? Well, first, there's a couple questions within that. DeMarco no, had zero to do with it. I talked to players on airplanes all the time. That was uh, you know, it was made a lot of you know media coverage, but... This, I, in the building, talk to them all the time. I'm not someone who's hands off, and uh, I, I try to get a sense of uh, uh, of players and, and their concerns in, in the locker room at all times, um, all year round. So that's that's not it at all. Uh, you know, there's so many variables that go into it. Uh, it's important to uh, I go back to peak performance. If you want to have peak performance, you got to have tremendous uh, collaboration, trust, respect. Um, smartness, uh, agility, uh, you've got to have a lot going for you to achieve peak, per peak performance in leadership. And so, um, you know, that was, the, that was the decision was made to, uh, to move on with a, with a new leader as a head coach. Jeffrey, I'm sure there was a lot of self-evaluation uh, during the course of, of right. this process coming yep. to this decision. What was, in your opinion, your biggest misstep over, over the course of, of handling CHIP? You know, I think, well, I, I go back to the original hiring of Chip. Um, it, it, was a, it was a bold choice. Um, we knew what the potential pitfalls were. Um, he was our first choice. Um, it was a unanimous decision we all had in the hiring process that uh, we should make that bold choice. Um, I thought after, you know, 15 years of going in one direction that uh, there was a a reason to do that. Um, and I, I think whenever you, you, you make a bold choice, I'd hate to ever be risk averse. I don't ever want to operate that way, whether it's acquiring a player or uh, picking a head coach or whatever. It's much better to go for it than to just uh, you know say, okay, well, other teams are doing it that way or something like that. That's not the way we've ever operated. And um, so um, I think one of the things is when you make a bold choice, there's increased risk. And sometimes it just doesn't work out when you take risks. Jeff, <clears throat> Jeff, just to clarify yeah. uh, Howie Roseman's role, yeah. will you guys be seeking out a, a traditional general manager to, to step into the front office? And do you have any concern that the same search committee, yourself, Howie, and, and Don Smolinski, that led you to Chip Kelly is also leading this search? No, I'm, f I'm very confident that this search will be done uh, very, very professionally, as the last one was. We uncovered uh, several excellent candidates, and, um, uh, you know, I guess Chip was probably number one on a lot of teams' lists last time, and we were no exception um, for those that wanted to, you know, make that bold choice. And uh, I'm very confident that uh, what we're going to assemble uh, in terms of that search will, will lead us and our fans to a, a really excellent choice. So. No, I'm, I'm excited about starting that search. We've already started last night. Jeffrey, right, right in the middle. Here. Yeah. Um, given Chip's background before you hired him, and given the two years you had to interact with him, evaluate him, get to know him a little bit, what, what made you think that giving him the power you gave him a year ago and keeping Howie in the organization, that that scenario would work? You know, I think that it was... Um, I wanted to make Chip accountable for everything he wanted to have happen. And uh, one of the ways to make him accountable was to have him make those decisions, because that is what he insisted on uh, decisively doing. So uh, if you want to make those decisions, be accountable for them. And um, that's, you know, that's the direction it took. Uh, there was a risk involved in allowing uh, Chip to have that kind of say over player transactions. Uh, however, um, you know, risk reward. Sometimes the risks don't work, and in and, and this case, it didn't work. 
going, going back to that moment where you yeah. did give him full control of the football operations, he hadn't had NFL experience prior to coming here. Did you feel if he didn't get that, that he would leave and you'd lose him and that was the only way you could keep him here by, by giving him that? No, you know, I used the word maximizing last March, I think it was, when I spoke to most of you. Uh, it, there was really no choice in terms of maximizing Chip uh, without him uh, having the lever, so to speak, of making those decisions. Uh, that's, that's where it was at. I mean, I think um, you either were all in or you should find a new coach in terms of uh, the trust. And so um, the choice was, let's, let's see if that's going to work. Uh, and in terms of, uh, uh, you know, the results, part of that's the reason we're here today. Jeff, Jeff what are you I'll looking for? Back here. Yeah. What are you looking for in a new coach? Do you want an NFL style coach, a guy with NFL experience? And um, is anybody on this staff, current staff, a candidate? Yeah. Um, you know, I think uh, in terms of what we're looking for in a coach, it's um, several things. And it's um, number one, a smart st strategic thinker. That's, that's, that's a, a given. You've got to be looking out for the short-term, mid-term, and long-term interests of the franchise. Um, looking for somebody who uh, interacts very well and communicates clearly with everybody he works with and comes in touch with. Um, understands the passion of our fans and what it's like to coach the Philadelphia Eagles. It's a unique and incredibly passionate fan base um, that just wants to win. And uh, you've got to incorporate that in your life, in your heart, and you've got to be willing to do that. Um, and an another, issue, another thing is attention to detail. I think all good coaches have tremendous attention to detail uh, in this league. Uh, and lastly, and amongst many other things, but I'll just mention a few, lastly is you've got to, um, you've got to open your heart to players and everybody you want to, to achieve peak performance. And um, I would call it, I would call it a, a style of leadership that values information, all the resources that are provided, and at the same time values emotional intelligence. And uh, I think in today's world of the way businesses are run and sports teams are run, that a combination, and it's not easy to have, a combination of all those factors creates the best chance to succeed. Jeff, Jeffrey, over here. Over in terms here. of, uh, Bob, in terms of the staff, um, uh, you know, no, no one is uh, eliminated. Uh, every every member of the staff is under contract, and uh, yes, it's possible that there'll be some interviews of members of the staff. Jeffrey, over here. Um, Chip obviously brought in. A lot of the players who fit his system, who, you know, and his system was obviously unique. Um, do you see the state of the organization like you guys starting over, rebuilding? Um, where do you kind of see where things are right now? No, I don't see it as, as in that in any way. I mean, the tempo was unique, um, but the kinds of players, whether it's Darren Sproles, um, DeMarco Murray, um, Sam Bradford, uh, Vinnie Curry, you name it. Uh, these are players that can fit in uh, any system. And um, uh, it remains to be seen if we run a high tempo type of offense or not. That'll be determined by the new head coach. But I don't see any players on the roster that uh, one would say are only a fit for a Chip Kelly team. Not at all. So we have to increase the talent level uh, and increase the um, performance level of those we have. And, uh, you know, that, that's, that's the key. It's not a, a fit system type of situation. No, I don't. No, I don't. Three more last three questions. Yeah, Jeff, will you be considering current college coaches, or is that a path you would prefer not to go down again right now? And also, you've had a kind of a bias towards offensive coaches in the past. Yeah. Would, do you still want to go that direction? All good questions. Um, you know, no category is, is uh, diminished here. Um, it's, we're going to look at uh, NFL coaches, NFL coordinators, uh, college coaches, um, retired coaches, any, any category you can come up with if we think it's the best candidate. So um, no, there will be no change in categories. It's, it's open to figuring that, figuring that out. 
Um, yeah, what was the other part of the question, Paul? Offense. Yeah, offense versus defense, no. We're looking for the best leader. Uh, if, you know, I've, I've looked carefully at uh, coaches around the league and um, where they come from, and uh, I don't think there's any uh, clear evidence of offense over defense, defense over offense. It comes down to the leadership ability uh, in today's with today's athlete in today's world. It's different than it was a long time ago, but um, I, I, I don't treat offense or defense differently. Uh, Jeffrey, uh, over here. Yeah. Um, you mentioned the collaborative approach, and uh, yeah. Tom Donahue got a promotion. Why, why won't he be included in the coaching search? Tom will be consulted for sure. When I say coaching search, it just means um, who's leading it. But there's, a, there, there's a, a series, a slew of valuable people that have already been contacted and will be contacted that are um, a key part of the search, and Tom is one of them. Jeff, uh, back here. Yeah. This season began with such massive expectations. What has been the most difficult part for you? You know, um, uh, this has been one of the most disappointing seasons I've ever endured. Uh, I, I didn't feel, as, as you probably remember when I spoke to the media in August, that our preseason success would have anything to do with our regular season. I, I, I've never believed that at all. So it wasn't, uh, it was surprising because I thought we were um, on the verge of something that could be very, very special, but uh, it wasn't, um, uh, it wasn't something where you could count on it based on preseason games. I don't think that's ever, so my expectations are, are, were confident and, and high, but not sky high, and uh, I'm realistic. It's, uh, it's a league that um, teams talent-wise are close together. Um, sometimes there's uh, a culture uh, within an organization with players that create uh, a momentum and create energy and create a, a fluidity. And, um, you know, we never achieved that. Uh, it was too inconsistent. And um, the difference between winning the division and not might have been slight, but uh, this was not a, a strong division. And uh, you got to look at things outside of just um, winning the NFC East. I, I think it's a bigger, bigger situation than that. Thanks, everybody.